it's Donna Skoglin coming to you from snowy Kelowna where we are all ready for spring. How about you? I wanted to hop on today and talk about why we get in our own way. Why do we self-sabotage? And especially when we're making progress and things are going well and then we do something to backslide and fall off the wagon and that's often when we quit. This is the topic of my Align and Thrive course this week and my Align and Thrive course, if you are not familiar, is my health coaching program where we implement habits for a better you. And self-sabotage comes up a lot because as we're up leveling and as we're making progress and creating new habits, we're moving into unfamiliar territory. We're moving into this new version of ourselves that maybe we've never been before. And it's what Pema Children calls the state of groundlessness. And I love this. It's like we have no ground to stand on because we're we don't know who we are with these maybe new and different and better habits. So what happens when we are in that place is we'll often do something to self-sabotage and bring us back down to the status quo, the place that is familiar, and our comfort zone, basically. And this is very frustrating because part of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, the higher part of our brain, wants progress and we want these desired outcomes and these goals that we set out for ourselves and then we do things that go against that so why do we do this and i'd love to hear if you want to comment why you think we self-sabotage i'd love to hear because this is something that i think about a lot and i think that there are several reasons and i think it comes down to these four universal human tendencies that we have one is that we fear the unknown. And some people call this fear of failure, some people call this fear of success. Whatever side of the tracks that you fall on, basically, we don't know what's gonna happen. If we start setting boundaries, for example, with our husband and saying, you know what, honey, I, I'm not gonna watch TV at night, I'm gonna go to bed early and read my book in bed. We don't know how they're gonna react. And that's scary, and we have these assumptions often how people re will react to the changes that we make and the the scariest thing I think this is another human tendency is that we just want to be part of the tribe we don't want to be kicked out of the nest because we are tribal creatures and we fear that abandonment basically and so what can we do about this and how this shows up in a self-sabotaging way when there is this fear of the unknown is we will just quit we'll give up on ourselves because we'd rather not go there than see what's going to happen than risk maybe being abandoned or being left or being judged or criticized or have someone react badly or not like how we respond in our new way so I love this, uh, I'm, I'm reading the book Tools, which mixed reviews, I don't know, I haven't quite decided if I like it, I wouldn't, at this point I'm not recommending it. <laughs> but it does have a few things that I do like, and he talks about when you are facing something scary, the unknown. Fear is basically excitement without the breath. So we always start there, just take some deep breaths, and then we can reverse that tendency to run away from fear and actually move towards it. And he calls it the reversal of desire. And we can actually say to ourselves, bring it on, <laughs> bring it on. And something that I've done, so I'm a brand new skier. I'm, a, I'm not, a, a, I'm still a beginner, even though I've been doing it a little bit every year for the last 10 years, I still consider myself an amateur. I will, when there's a, I'm on a run, that's a little bit scary, it's a little bit steep. I will, instead of saying, I'm scared, I'll say, I'm excited. And because it's the same physical reaction in our body, if we just change the words, and words are extremely powerful, and say, I'm excited. And you know, there are those people out there that love the unknown, those, those thrill seekers that jump into scary situations on purpose. And so we can actually just change our mindset, change our thinking, and decide to be excited about the unknown. And then also look at it as, just uh, with curiosity and with a sense of, you know, I wonder what's going to happen and what's the worst that can happen. I think that's a very good question to ask yourself. The second human tendency that I think is at the root of why we self-sabotage 
is we don't like to be uncomfortable. <laughs> and that looks like running away from pain or running towards pleasure. Now when we make changes, say we've decided to get up every day early and exercise, there's a little bit of discomfort in exercising in the morning. It's just, you know, you're putting your body into uh, a physical state that sometimes hurts and sometimes is exhausting and you have to do it on purpose. You have to make yourself uncomfortable on purpose. And I love, um, I can't remember who said, I think it was Christina Sell. She talks about yoga is learning how to be comfortable with discomfort. And we put ourselves in these uncomfortable positions in a yoga class and we breathe. We practice breathing there and sitting with that and not reacting, not running out the room or not getting out of the pose, but just being there. And I think we can do this in our everyday lives. I think we're really bad at doing this in our everyday lives. And this is why we do numbing behaviors and we can call it buffing, buffering behaviors or escapism behaviors like emotional eating or grabbing your phone and going on social media or watching Netflix or shopping or whatever it is for you, drinking alcohol, smoking pot, drugs, all of that is basically a way to get out of our current state that we're not enjoying. If we're in an uncomfortable state, whether that is loneliness or stress or boredom or depression or anxiety we don't want to feel that so what do we do we try to find the thing that gives us an instant hit of relief and often those things are not good for us so in the moment we might avoid the discomfort however it leads to long-term more long-term pain and suffering so if we take that long view, which leads me to my third, the third universal truth is that we tend to be really short-sighted. In the moment, we will always seek instant gratification. So if in that moment, instead of just wanting to feel good now, we can actually take a deathbed perspective and we can look out and project forward and ask ourselves, do I really want to perpetuate this habit of self-sabotaging, whatever that looks like, whether that's a bad habit that you have or a tendency to procrastinate or to quit on yourself or whatever it looks like. I'd love to hear from you. What are ways that you self-sabotage? You can comment below. And what does that look like in your own life? And have you been able to identify ways that you do that? Because I think that is always the key. It's always the first step is becoming aware of how we get in our own way. And when we are actually running away from our feelings and running away from our emotions and trying to escape the, our current reality. So learning how to sit with that is so huge. Sit with that discomfort and also not feel like we are entitled to feel good all the time. Half of the time, we're not going to feel good. And that's okay. And once we accept that, the negative emotions actually aren't so bad because it's not something that we should feel shameful about or feel like there's something wrong with us and that you know there's you know, we have this dark cloud above us it's just part of being human it's just vibrations it's just these passing things emotion actually means to move through and if we allow that them to just move through us without resisting without suppressing then they will in a very short time 90 seconds actually. So I actually have a tip sheet. And if you're on um, Instagram, go to my Facebook page. I'm, I'm doing live Facebook and Instagram simultaneously. So I'm trying to go between the two cameras. Um, you can grab that there. I have a tip sheet that has, I've been studying positive psychology for a long time. And as a health coach and a life coach and a business coach, mindset is huge. It is really like, no, you, we, it's not about knowing what to do because most of us know what to do. It's actually getting out of our own way and changing our thinking and changing how we react to our emotions and being able to rewire subconscious beliefs and identify limiting thoughts. And that's really how we make progress. So make sure to grab that. What's the fourth one? The fourth universal tendency is, I have to look, I wrote this down because I, I knew I forget. Yes, is we want to take the path of least resistance. We want to conserve energy, and that's really how we evolve as human beings, is we try to conserve energy whenever possible. 
Nowadays, this is not a good thing because we have become inactive, sedentary couch potatoes. So we have this tendency to, to take the easy way out, and which is what leads us to wanting to procrastinate and delay and avoid and basically go back to what is easy and familiar and comfortable because that there's no resistance there. We're used to that. So how do we overcome that? To overcome this desire to conserve energy and to actually push ourselves and push our edge and challenge ourselves on purpose, I think we need to really make ourselves do that by planning ahead. And when you plan ahead, you're creating a decision for your future self. And once you make that decision once, the idea is that you never make that decision again. So when the time comes to follow through on your plans, you don't go by how you feel in the moment. You go by the plan that you set in advance and you do it no matter what. And one way we can get ourselves to do things when we don't feel like it is what's called a starting ritual. And there's a great book on this called The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins and she talks about just saying to yourself, five, four, three, two, one, go. And you give yourself five seconds to move out of the lizard brain, which basically wants to just stay on your ass and stay, you know, not do the thing you don't, that you're avoiding. And it switches over to your prefrontal cortex, which is that higher part of the brain, which knows what's best for us, that's looking forward and projecting into you know, our goals and our dreams and knows that this is what we need to do if we want to get there. And in those five seconds, we can make a choice to follow the plan, do the hard thing. And that is so gratifying when we do that. That gives us so much more um, fuel and it feels so rewarding as opposed to when we actually get in our own way and we self-sabotage. We will never regret, regret the effort we put in to do something challenging, even if that thing doesn't work out because we are in integrity with ourselves and that is deeply fulfilling and satisfying. So I hope this was helpful. And to recap, we wanna do, we wanna go against these four tendencies. The four tendencies are we want to avoid discomfort. We fear the unknown. We want to take the path of least resistance. We want to take the easy way out. And I'm going to forget the other one again. Fear unknown, avoid discomfort, short-sighted, path of least resistance. <laughs> and so we want to think long-term, deathbed perspective. Do I, what do I really want? And if I follow through on this, I know I'm going to feel so much better. Can I just make myself do it? What little ritual can I create to get create some momentum? Can I sit with whatever discomfort there is arising right now in this moment and just allow it to be there and not try to push it away? And then can I make a plan? Make a plan and stick to it no matter how I'm feeling in the moment. All right, I'd love to hear your thoughts and I will see you soon.